This update brought to you by American Implement, dedicated to the past, committed to the future. In a moment, Kansas Livestock Association immediate past president, Barb Dowdy, when we return. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation has been around a long time, and a lot of folks have trusted them to design, build, and service all sizes of commercial and on-farm storage for grain and equipment. Wolfter is also known for their outstanding irrigation division where they stock a complete selection of nozzles, regulators, drops, gear drives, electrical, and structure components. Looking for an electric motor? Wolfter has a large selection in single and three phase. Next time, reach out to the pros who have decades of experience at taking care of business the right way. Wolfter Construction and Irrigation. SNS Trailer Sales with two locations in Ness City, Kansas is where everybody goes to buy or rent trailers. They feature the all new, all aluminum Mauer grain trailer with all of the electric options, the easy to load detached trailers, and a huge stock of header trailers. At the west location, you'll find bumper poles, goose necks, and oil field specialty trailers, along with flat and utility beds for pickups. SNS Trailer Sales in Ness City and on the web, but remember, you do have to spell out the end. And joining us now is Barb Dowdy, who is a Wapunsee County rancher and uh, just wrapping up her time as president of the Kansas Livestock Association. We're here at their meeting in Wichita. And uh, Barb, I think we talked about a year ago with anticipation. And uh, uh, this is usually one of the quickest years, a time to lead uh, the state's largest livestock organization. You know, anytime you're busy, it just goes really fast. And this organization, like you said, it being so large, 5,600 of my fellow cattle producers, um, we have an incredible organization here that relies very heavily on volunteer leadership, but also a really good professional staff. And together, I think we do a really good job for, for producers. Let's talk about uh, this past year. Uh, go back, uh, you know, the end of uh, uh, 2018 and now uh, this whole process. Uh, uh, a lot of times we always want to give credit or blame for the cattle market, but there, there's definitely been one challenge after the other after the other uh, and this this will probably go down as, as the year of, of the challenge for 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 the industry I have not met a cattleman yet that doesn't want to just see 2019 out the door we started with uh, when when we first started this year personally on our ranch we were still in record-breaking drought and then the faucets turned on and they didn't seem to ever turn off and and we faced a winter uh, cattlemen in Kansas faced a winter with um, un almost unprecedented mud and cold temperatures and relentless conditions. Uh, the good news was we broke our drought uh, and that problem uh, solved itself. Uh, production was good for both forages and grains this year and we came into the fall in pretty darn good shape. Then of course we, we had the fire at the Tyson plant uh, that, that threw our markets um, into what appeared to be chaos but it was actually with the uh, advantage of a little bit of distance in hindsight, those markets reacted exactly how they should have and, and, and served to pull us through what was really a tough time and out the other side. Being on the ranch is sometimes it, uh, uh, it, it's, it's also not only healing to kind of get away from the hustle and bustle uh, of, of everything. Uh, and I, I, I say that saying, you spent an awful lot of time in D.C. this past year fighting for a number of issues. It is really important. Uh, we, we get involved in our own little world and our operations and we don't realize sometimes what's going on and we maybe don't appreciate the ramifications for how we or the next generation might do business. So it becomes important that when you're involved with these organizations that you step up and you do your part and part of that is DC, part of it's Topeka, part of it's with your local government organizations. Barb Downey, who is a Muncie County rancher and uh, the outgoing president of the KLA, is joining us. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Day and night, till the job is done, Teeter is the one that works for you. Fields of green, reaching toward the sun, Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter is the one. Teeter is the one that works for you. Teeter Irrigation, your source for water management. When you've had a best friend for over 50 years, you develop a trust. And the Scott Co-op has been a trusted rural friend since 1957. A co-op keeps money in the area, doing business for and with their members. 
and that helps keep their hometown thriving with keeping money in the community. Scott Co-op is not just an elevator. It's the rule way of doing business. So, when you see an elevator, remember your friends at Scott Co-op. And our guest is Barb Downey, a Wabansi County rancher and now past president of the Kansas Livestock Association. And Barb, we talked about you know the challenges not only on the ranch, the challenges in dealing with policy. Uh, but one of the good things, the shining example in, the, in this industry, has been one that that has had a lot of discussion, and that is trying to find not only the value, but 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 trying to find really where we are with the beef checkoff. The beef checkoff I think is one of our most misunderstood programs. What it can and what it can't do. But independent of that, I think we are seeing the results of literally years of effort on uh, by the checkoff on behalf of all beef producers. We are seeing beef demand truly increase. We are watching our exports around the world for a high quality product contribute 300 plus dollars to each of our bottom line uh, for each, each head of cattle processed. Uh, we are starting to see the benefits. Does change happen overnight? No. It's a long, steady process with many facets. There's foundational research that has been done with our checkoff dollars that assures uh, consumers that protein is part of a healthy diet, uh, that it's necessary, that it, it can be part of a weight loss diet. There was some really good research done that, that showed that a high protein diet in, uh, involving beef up to six ounces a day was actually as effective at controlling your blood pressure as the, the classic diet that, that cardiologists always want to prescribe. And of course, for you and me, much easier to stick to. The, um, so better able to affect our health. That kind of foundational research has, has led to consumers' increased acceptance and demand for beef, and that's been really good for all of us. Well, there's, there's been a lot of kind of who does what, and, and today is not the day for that conversation. But wanted to give you the opportunity because, uh, there, especially in Kansas, there are two distinctions, KLA, the Kansas Beef Council, while you may be kind of housed in the sa under the same roof, it'd be like a family of, co you know, almost kind of cousins together. I mean, yeah, you, you know each other, uh, but, but, you know, one doesn't tell the other one what to do. Yeah. I'm a checkoff pair. I'm a producer. I've been involved with the Beef Council for a number of years, and I have the same concerns as every other producer out there does. Are they using my dollars wisely? Are they using them in the way that the act and order prescribes? And having been on the inside of this process for many years, I can say without hesitation, yes. So I'd, I'd like to put that one to bed. What I really want to do is go forward with what we do so well, and that is promoting beef, selling its positive attributes, and bringing our consumers back to the dinner table for another good steak. It is, I tell you. One of the biggest things that I, you know, at, look at this, trying to get to that four ounces because it tastes so good, but uh, we appreciate the effort and the effort that, that the cattlemen are doing to, to meet the marketplace. So, and again, thanks for your time. And, and uh, is there one thing that sticks out in your mind, though, of all the things that you experienced this year in the helm that you want to uh, maybe reflect and share on? I would say that, you know, the, the helm is accurate, but it is truly a team effort. It is all of us doing what each one does well, coming together in a coordinated way, and that's the way it works. We need everybody to be involved. The cost of everything has gone up dramatically over the last 75 years. one exception, keeping electricity affordable. Wheatland Electric, delivering energy for life, your Touchstone Energy Cooperative. Would you like to see something done about high gas prices and low unemployment? Western Place Energy in Campus, Kansas is doing something about it. They're a proud part of Growth Energy, America's ethanol supporters, and they employ 38 people and will be adding more following the expansion. Ethanol fuel not only reduces the cost of regular gasoline, it's good for the environment and keeps money right here in the United States while supporting local rural jobs. Western Plains Energy, doing something for the future. Well, join us for Ag News and Markets weekdays on 1030 KBUF. 
Like us on Facebook at KBUF 1030. Follow us on Twitter at KBUF. Thanks for watching. I'm Ken Rogers.